What is up, Dynasty Leaguers? Welcome back into another DLF YouTube channel video. We have some breaking news coming in from the NFL. It has finally happened. Julio Jones has been traded to the Tennessee Titans. So we need to talk about and dive into this entire trade because this has major fantasy and dynasty implications from both sides of this trade, from both the Titans and the Atlanta Falcons. A lot of big name players and a lot of players that we really care about on our dynasty rosters. So let's get into this video. So like I said, it's finally happened. Julio Jones has been traded to the Tennessee Titans, a team that was on the short list to be in the running for Julio Jones and to be able to trade for him, including having the willingness to you know, trade draft capital for him, have the salary cap to trade for him, and also have a need at the wide receiver position that Julio Jones can fit and fill in in that need. So this has finally happened really early in on June. We expected it to happen pretty soon after June 1st because that was the date in which you know, a post June 1st trade for Julio Jones for the Atlanta Falcons in terms of salary cap would mitigate his entire $15 million guarantee that he's due in 2021 and spread that out over two seven and a half million dollars over 2021 and 2022. So that's really the goal that the Atlanta Falcons were trying to get. That's why we had to wait till after June 1st and it's now June 6th for him to be actually traded. Uh, so the final terms of the trade was Atlanta Falcons getting a 2022 second rounder and a 2023 fourth rounder for Julio Jones and a 2023 sixth round pick. So this is pretty significant, like I said, uh, in terms of dynasty players and implications on both aspects and from both teams of this. So we can start from the Atlanta Falcons here. This, of course, has a major impact on Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley now um, would probably be in the range to have an ultimate ceiling of being the wide receiver one overall in fantasy football in 2021 and beyond. He is the absolutely the, the ability to go nuclear without Julio Jones over the last two years. He's averaging 20 fantasy points per game over 100 yards per game. He only has one game with less than 15 fantasy points without Julio Jones, and that was still 12.6 points in week 17 last year where he still had 12 targets, eight receptions, and only 56 yards and didn't score a touchdown. That was his worst game without Julio Jones over the past two years. So Calvin Ridley absolutely goes nuclear without Julio Jones. And Matt Ryan, of course, is still there. And so this is going to be wheels up for Calvin Ridley in Dynasty and in Fantasy in 2021 and beyond. The next big impact that this really has is basically Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, of course, the fourth overall pick to the Atlanta Falcons in the 2021 NFL Draft. He's been a hot commodity in Dynasty, the tight end three right now in May, DLF ADP being taken at the 3-4 turn. Uh, we have yet to have June ADP that's all being drafted and mocked out right now. I'm not sure if the news of this is really going to affect Kyle Pitts' June DLF ADP value. We might see it more reflected in his July ADP. Uh, but ultimately, Kyle Pitts is probably going to see uh, an, a significant increase in value, if not a whole round to get to that 2-3 turn, uh, maybe even jump Travis Kelsey and George Kittle to be the tight end two or now potentially the tight end one in Dynasty without even playing a snap, without even getting us into August or in training camp. Uh, but ultimately, I think that that might actually work itself out because we can talk about Kyle Pitts now as basically the wide receiver two in this offense. And the way that I view their utilization of Kyle Pitts is basically going to be a big body outside wide receiver like he was utilized in Florida. Use him as basically your Julio Jones replacement, right? You have Calvin Ridley on the outside, Kyle Pitts on the opposite side. That still allows you to play Hayden Hurst as a traditional true tight end in line. And then also, you know, you have Mike Davis and, and Matt Ryan working out at the backfield. That I think is ultimately the offensive personnel situation that the Atlanta Falcons are gonna go with. And if that's the case, you know, because Matt Ryan is probably gonna throw 600 plus times, he's done that seven out of his 13 NFL seasons in each of the past three years, I wouldn't really put it past him to throw 600 plus times again this year, even with a new offense and new regime and Arthur Smith. You know, that team is going to be crazy pass happy just with the weapons and the personnel that they have. They don't have Derrick Henry. So I ultimately believe that this is going to be a true high pass volume offense. Calvin Ridley can only do so much. This is going to be Kyle Pitts' you know, wide receiver too. I wouldn't you know, put it past him to have 100 plus, you know, 100 and maybe 10 or 15 total targets. We're talking about maybe a 7 to 80 reception type of a player for over 1,000 yards. 
however many touchdowns he gets as a true red zone weapon that we saw at Florida, you know, we could be talking about the most productive rookie pass catcher from this 2021 class in 2021. And if not the most productive, at least, you know, up there with Jamar Chase, uh, at least off the rip. So if that happens and having him in your tight end slot is going to be a major, major difference maker for your team and for your dynasty and fantasy rosters. So, you know, I've been kind of fading Kyle Pitts and have kind of been against him at his price and whatnot over the past couple of months. And this really is going to be the news and really ultimately the situation for Kyle Pitts in which he can truly exceed those values and exceed his expectations or at least meet them and still be a fantastic quality tight end. And really, you know, this really show, showcases the actual path for him to be the next Jimmy Graham, Rob Gronkowski, where he's more of an outside wide receiver playing as a tight end. And that is going to be major fantasy, major, major, major fantasy points for your roster. So this is wheels up for Kyle Pitts. We kind of expected that would be the case when Julio Jones got traded. Now it's actually happening. So this is, you know, if you have Kyle Pitts already, Congratulations, because you have a major fantasy weapon with a lot of value right now, and he hasn't even gotten to training camp yet. So congrats on that. We can move on to the Tennessee Titans side, because I think this is ultimately the more interesting side, and we have a lot more of question marks and what is going to go on for the Tennessee Titans. Um, first and foremost, Ryan Tannehill gets a premier weapon. He's got AJ Brown and Julio Jones now, and still has the efficiency of Derrick Henry coming out of the backfield. This is going to be fantastic for Ryan Tannehill. I, you know, he's going to be a quarterback one in fantasy football at the end of the year. And I just, you know, it's, it's fantastic for him. Derrick Henry, I think this also really helps Derrick Henry because now, you know, defenses couldn't key in on just him and AJ Brown. They really have to go after Julio Jones and AJ Brown and Derrick Henry. This is a scary offense. So Derrick Henry's not going to see as many, you know, eight men in the box and uh, a whole lot of defenses just trying to key in on him. And I think that he could just do exactly what he did last year again. Like, all, he's going to get 300 plus, 350, you know, carries, another 15, maybe 20 receptions. And he's just going to have another 2,000 rushing yards. And that's going to be Derrick Henry. So that's, that's at least what we got there. The receiving game and the receiving uh, options that we have on the Tennessee Titans is really where it's interesting. Of course, everybody wants to know what does this do for A.J. Brown? who was being talked about and being drafted as the wide receiver one overall in Dynasty. Uh, how does this affect him and whatnot? Because ultimately we were, you know, really hoping and trying to move into 2021 with AJ Brown potentially getting 150 plus targets because he's been really, really good for fantasy over the past two years, wide receiver 14 last year in 21 and 2019. But he's done that on, you know, just around about 100 total targets on a year. So ultimately, I think this doesn't affect AJ Brown in terms of what he's already has done and what he could continue to do, you know, and uh, I don't think that this hurts him in that capacity, that he's still going to be a, you know, a 110, 120 target type of a wide receiver, 80 receptions, 1100, 1200 yards, eight, nine, 10 touchdowns. That's still AJ Brown. That's still what he does. Obviously, this definitely hurts his ceiling because I don't think he can get to top five wide receiver territory without the targets that he possibly would have gotten without Julio Jones. Uh, but this really shouldn't affect your dynasty view of AJ Brown in, because you're still going to have, uh, if not a wide receiver one in 2021 and beyond, you know, a very high end wide receiver two. And that might not be what you expected and what you drafted him to be, but you know, it's still fantastic. And that's still what he's been doing over the last couple of years. So you still have a very high key, high quality wide receiver asset on your roster. Then of course, uh, you know, we have Julio Jones to talk about. Julio Jones is a difficult player to assess in terms of what he's going to do with the Titans. Obviously he's not gonna have the same volume that he would have had in Atlanta because Atlanta could possibly throw 150 more times than Tennessee. And obviously that's not gonna have, you know, the same volume that he would have gotten. This ultimately was, in my opinion, the best situation that Julio Jones could have been traded to outside of being with Atlanta for fantasy football in 2021. Definitely like it a lot more than if he would have went to Kansas City, the Rams, uh, New England. Uh, so I really, really like that he got you know the ultimate best situation for him outside of Atlanta and going to Tennessee. 
I still think that he could be very, very similar to AJ Brown. I think that they're going to be very, very close in targets at the end of the year, maybe being around another 120 for him as well. Uh, because when you look at this Tennessee Titans offense, they have 192 vacated targets left between Corey Davis, Johnny Smith, and Adam Humphreys. And that's 40% of their targets from last year are now gone, which is why we loved AJ Brown so much. But that's still, you know, a big quality piece of target share for Julio Jones to step into while also allowing AJ Brown to see a few more targets. And I really think that's going to be the key to this offense is they're going to funnel everything through AJ Brown and Julio Jones. The Titans last year were second, according to Sharp Football Stats, in 12 personnel. That's where they have one running back, two tight ends, and two wide receivers. They were second in the league in first and second down and running through 12 personnel behind only the Philadelphia Eagles. So ultimately, this offense is really only made for two wide receivers, and that's really all that they like to put out there. I think this is a big RIP to any Josh Reynolds guys out there. If you were banking on having a Josh Reynolds kind of breakout season, Des Fitzpatrick, the late round guy, I think this is a big rip for him. Uh, but obviously, these guys could be more dynasty plays as Julio Jones kind of ages out. He's already being, you know, whatever, 31, 32. So he's aging out a little bit and these guys could slide into more of that role. But ultimately what we've got right now in 2021 is AJ Brown and Julio Jones, both soaking up 120 or maybe more 130 each total targets on this team. And then Anthony Ferkser and the other wide receivers and then the running backs grabbing kind of what's left out of all of that. So that's at least my view on the Tennessee Titans and the Atlanta Falcons and how this Julio Jones trades impacts both teams let me know in the comments if you feel differently if you feel the same uh, and just how you guys are reacting to this julio jones trade news because we finally got it we've been waiting for this to happen for you know a while now and a lot of the you know, news and stuff and the rumors were really picking up speed that this was going to happen really really soon and it finally did so now we can talk about it we can you know move into 2021 with julio jones as a tennessee titan wheels up for calvin ridley and I think that's going to be it for today. That's going to wrap it all up. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you all later.